Hello everyone and welcome once again to Scorpion Cigar Reviews. Today I have, uh, we'll just call him Josh once again, if that's alright. <laughs> uh, anyway, he's been in a couple of our other videos. And uh, tonight we have uh, something kind of special. Um, just got back from a trip to Florida and they went to uh, Ybor City. Uh, did a little day trip and picked up um, several cigars and uh, several of the shops they had the Torcedores right there rolling cigars. Now this particular cigar uh, didn't come from the shop where the Torcedore was, was there but um, the shopkeep did tell me that they rolled their own cigars in-house. So this is an in-house cigar and I've had two other cigars um, from them that I've al already smoked and they were really good. Real, real pleased. Um, now they didn't tell me, um, and I didn't really ask, uh, I just kind of got the impression either the shopkeep um, didn't know or didn't care to disclose all the particulars about the cigars. All they told me was they were mild, medium, and strong. So I picked up one of each, and then I picked up a barber pole. Um, Obviously a, a shade grown wrapper uh, it appears and uh, maybe like something along the lines of a Maduro or something and uh, I've already smoked the, the strong and the mild and the strong was a very dark wrapper and the mild was a light wrapper so I'm thinking this may be a combination of those two I don't know that for for a fact it's really cool looking have you ever smoked a barber pole one like this before mm -hmm. yeah yeah I've smoked barber poles before now the only problem with barber poles is um, Sometimes they don't burn at an even rate because right. of a different leaf that's that's used. So it may burn a little uh, cockeyed, or sometimes it may even start to unravel a little bit. Um, now the other the other thing that's a little special about tonight is um, mm -hmm. picked up some some rum, which we don't normally do. I don't normally do in my videos. I have done some rums in the past, um, but it's not um, typical of me. But this rum uh, was distilled in St. Augustine, Florida. Um, Pot distilled rum, handmade. Uh, I'm blind. The the light <laughs> now I can't read what it says. It says handmade in in the nation's oldest city, St. Augustine Distillery. Uh, now this is 45% alcohol. Um, not terribly priced. It was $45 for this. They do some other things. They it had some gin and some vodka, and I'm not really a gin or vodka guy, I didn't even sample it. Um, and then they have some whiskey that they're aging, it's not ready yet. So I got on their list to uh, shoot me an email when it's ready. So, uh, but anyway, so seeing that it's still pushing 90 degrees outside, it was low 90s today. I'm going to have a little bit of ice in the glass with these. It's 45%, so it could use a little watering down. It is pretty damn tasty and its own right, though. Oh, yeah, yeah, real good. Um, now, with the... You'll notice the way it feels. Mm -hmm. It's almost... I get the impression that they coated it with the, the glue that they use to hold the seams together. It's, it's mm -hmm. a gum glue. It's a natural. It doesn't put out any flavor, supposedly, but I find even things that don't put out flavor right. do do something, whether it's a, a mouth feel or just some characteristic to it. There always is. Uh, you know, water is supposed to be neutral. I can taste water. But anyway, um, there are other cigars that aren't barber pole, have a very supple baby butt soft. You're talking like yeah, felt just, almost. Yeah, just the, the way the wrapper feels is just just phenomenal but this it, it, you don't have that and it feels right. to me like it's been coated with that glue probably to help hold the barber pole right. together which it's not a big deal because I kind of expect that from a barber pole so uh, now with that said you know being the barber pole and have to be careful with it unraveling really take care not to cut too much off the head mm -hmm. because if it starts to unravel you will be done for see just, just a little bit how the sh I still have the shoulder where it curls up. You just want a very small amount. You see what I cut off? Mm -hmm. Just not much bigger than, than that. Gotcha. And it's got good airflow. Good 
draw, so we're good to go there. About like that? Yeah, looks good. Now the uh, way to judge is see if you can draw through it. A little bit of leather, way in the back, kind of subtle, in the three-light draw. And that's about all I'm getting. And the nose, I'm not really getting a whole lot of anything. Just, uh... Some real generalized tobacco notes, very subtle. The foot is almost... There's a little bit of a spice there. I can feel a little kick of spice. A little, little tickle. And maybe a, like a, a dough of some sort. Cookie dough. Very subtle hint of cedar spice. Everything's very subtle. And we have a choice of lighters. You need to use the quad torch or the dual torch. We'll get this toasted up and we'll get somewhere into the first third and we'll be right back. Alright, so here we are maybe, oh, not even ten minutes in. You and I have both noticed there's a hell of a lot of pepper on this yeah. cigar. And it, it lingers and lingers and just doesn't go away. And like you said, that retrohale is like a kick in the nose. Yeah, yeah. It's like when you dive into the pool nose first and, you know, goes up your nose and about knocks you out and you feel it all the way up to your eyeballs. And yeah, yeah. And it's and it, it, it's hot. It's a hot pepper. It's super spicy. It just, it just, it's like the Energizer pepper bunny. It just keeps going and going. Yep. Which is, which is kind of cool because... I generally like spicy stuff. I think this is the first cigar I've smoked with you that's it's been like that, where it's just staying spicy. Yeah, 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 yeah I think so. Um, yeah, typically I, I I do like spice, but there are some people that that's all they look for. The, the hotter and the spicier, the better. That's all they that. want. Yeah. Uh, for me, I, I do enjoy the spice, but I'm hoping that, especially with this being a barber pole, right, that as I burn through that dark leaf and get into the lighter leaf some of that spice I'm hoping will tone down and I'll, I'll get some other softer flavors in there uh, maybe some leathers and, and some other kitchen spices that maybe aren't quite so potent um, I like a lot of flavor not not the heat mm -hmm. and hopefully our skunk friend won't come back and ruin it for us <laughs> I was uh, out here before, that would kill it. before we went on vacation I was getting ready to come on here and smoke a cigar. We'd walk the dogs and everything was fine. Mm -hmm. It wasn't five minutes later. I gathered up my, my whiskey and my cigar and everything, and I, I opened up the door. As soon as I opened up the door, I said, oh, closed it, turned around, came back in. <laughs> Luckily, there was a little bit of a breeze. I gave it, you know, 25, 30 minutes, mm -hmm. and I checked it again, and the scent was gone. So, yeah, that would that will ruin a cigar. <laughs> Because that's all you're going to smell is that skunk, and you're not going to pick up anything subtle. Now, this cigar probably would power through it, because this is spicy. It's still spicy. Yeah, it's just, man, it is there. Now, I got this from uh, La Hacienda de Cuba, was the name of the cigar shop, okay. in Ybor City, Florida, just outside of Tampa. Um, and it was, uh, they had a, a small walk-in humidor, and... Um, I remember right, they had like a small rolling table where maybe one person rolled, but I don't even know if it was functional or if it was just for aesthetics or, or what, because I didn't see anybody there rolling. They are also um, a coffee bar, like if you go to their website, they list a lot of uh, latte drinks and espresso, espresso drinks and different things like that. Um, so their mainstay isn't necessarily cigars. Um, whereas some of the other cigar shops, uh, one in particular, which I, I'll probably do a, a review on that down the road. Um, cigars was their thing. Mm. And in that cigar shop, as, lo as well as this cigar shop, the only cigars they sold were their own, the ones that they made. So that's, this is a house cigar. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, 
so I'm not going to go into a little uh, a lot of, a lot of detail about that other cigar shop because that'll be for another review. But um, yeah, I, I don't know the particulars of this. Um, the uh, the girl that worked in the shop, she um, just she didn't offer it, and I didn't really ask. There was a I just kind of got the impression that um, it wouldn't be disclosed. Now, maybe if I had really pressed her for the information, if she knew, she may have told me, but I don't know. But I wasn't looking to you know, either embarrass her or embarrass myself, right. <laughs> you know. So, um, or some of the other shops, you know, you could ask a question. You could tell they were just dying to tell you all the information there was, which I like. Um, I like to know as much about it as I can because then I can say okay well it's got this one tobacco leaf in it that I don't remember ever having that doesn't sound familiar right and if there's a, un a unique taste that may be associated with that then I know I can start looking for other cigars that have that particular tobacco leaf in it but anyway we'll continue smoking this and uh, we'll come back somewhere uh, oh, late in the first third if there's some changes otherwise we'll come back somewhere in the second third all right So, uh, about the rum, uh, as I mentioned, this is uh, distilled at uh, St. Augustine Distillery in St. Augustine, Florida, which is the nation's oldest city. And a lot of people don't, don't understand that. Uh, years ago, I didn't. Uh, we were always taught, if I remember correctly, at least how it was always drilled into our brains in public schools, Plymouth Rock and all that, you right. know, that that was the oldest area. Well, St. Augustine was settled long but well I don't want to embarrass myself because I may get some of the facts wrong so I'm just gonna say that uh, the way I understand it just because you landed here if you didn't build a city there you built your city here that would make this the oldest city right regardless of if it was the next day or ten years later mm -hmm. or, or whatever so I, I don't know all the particulars but St. Augustine is the nation's oldest city so uh, so as far as this rum goes, it's um, now we, we I put two not huge ice cubes, pretty good size uh, because it is 45% alcohol and uh, it's pretty warm out. Mm -hmm. So uh, the two ice cubes may have been a bit much. It's watered down pretty good. When I sampled it, we sampled it neat and at 45% at room temperature when it's 95 degrees outside, it was hot. It was hot inside in the tasting room. So you could feel the burn going all the way down, but you could taste this, this butterscotch and, uh, and some leather in there and a little bit of citrus, but that butterscotch, you know, it was very prevalent. I can still smell a little bit of butterscotch through it, even though I've overwatered it. A little bit of floral, some fruity. feels like Absolutely. butterscotch in the mouth. Mm -hmm. You can taste it. And it almost has a tequila character to it. Yeah, I could see that actually. Mm -hmm. That might be why I like it so much. Yeah, that could be. Yeah, it's, it's very tequila-esque for a rum. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, and rum being a cane sugar product as opposed to tequila being an agave plant right. product and whiskeys being a grain product. Mm -hmm. Gin, vodka, crane products, but for this to have a a tequila character is it's kind of strange. It, it's like a cross, mm -hmm. you know. But um, yeah, to, to cross over from one type to another, um, and this shouldn't have any tequila in it. It should be just you know pure cane, uh, you know, pure cane sugar fermented uh, drink. But uh, yeah, very tequila esque. Now. My wife tells me I tend to rattle, ramble on and on and on, and I just don't want to go. <laughs> I guess I do. So anyway, uh, I'm really enjoying this. This is very good, uh, well worth oh, yeah. the $45, in, oh, yeah. in, in my opinion, um, especially since there's some out there that are, you know, hundreds of dollars. Um, very good stuff. And I'm not a rum reviewer, so... I don't necessarily pick up all the nuances that someone that specifically reviews uh, various beverages such as you know, rum or whiskey or whatever. I do pick up a lot of the nuances, but I'm not going to go into all of it because I don't 
have all that. That's not my thing. Cigars is my thing. So uh, we'll come back with the cigar review. See you in a bit. All right. So now I'm into where I'm smoking. Uh, a lot of it's into the, the lighter colored leaf of the barber pole and the the pepper note has really subsided it's still there but it's certainly not as strong and it doesn't linger as mm -hmm. much for me um looks like you're into the lighter starting to come into the lighter stuff as well mm -hmm. how about you is it is the pepper toned down a bit oh, yeah, for you? yeah so yeah it's definitely the uh, the darker leaf is full of that that pepper blast just that just lingers and the lighter leaf is much more mild Are you still picking up that other flavor you haven't been able to figure out what it is? And it almost could be leather because it's not really, a, I guess, a flavor that I'm familiar with. Like smell I get, but I guess actually tasting like the smell of leather, I don't know. It's hard okay. to explain. Okay. Well, what you do is, it's not when you go home, find like either a leather belt or a boot or a coat or something. You just, you want to slobber out and get, get a couple good, you know, get some teeth marks in it, and then let that taste kind of sit in your mouth. <laughs> so, I mean, it very well could be that. Because, like I said, it it tastes familiar. I just can't put my finger on what it is. But yeah, I'm still not getting that. I'm, I'm still getting just various peppers. But now this is more of a, a kitchen pepper, mm. um, whereas when it was in the dark wrapper early on, it was more of a hot pepper, mm -hmm. um, and this is more of just a spice. Um, a little bit of mineral in there, getting some mineral notes. Some metallic minerals, not not flint, but there's there's something else in there. Definitely, I'm not quite sure what it is yet. Maybe a slightly woody note, you know, like, like a piece of wood. Mm -hmm. Very subtle. Yeah, so there's definitely some changes going on now. That. Now that that pepper note has kind of moved to the back burner, some of the other flavors are starting to come through. And I'd be willing to bet that as it burns through the lighter wrapper and gets more of the dark wrapper burning, I pepper. think that pepper note's going to come back. So we'll just see what happens. All right. See you in a bit. All right, so we've been smoking this for just about an hour. And... Uh, we both had to relight a couple times. Um, a little bit of a little bit of wavy burn, but not too bad. Um, and especially for being a, a barber pole, I'm actually pretty impressed with how well the burn has remained fairly consistent. So this is the first time it's gone kind of wonky and crazy on me here. But um, you know, I've been talking a lot, so it went out a couple times. Um, but uh, you said that when you got back into the dark band. Uh, the dark wrapper that that spice came back it's been pepper ever since mine came back a little bit but not like it was in that first third not nearly as as potent maybe um lingering in the background there's a little bit of like a, a barbecued meat of some sort um, like a grilled meat. Yeah. Kind, yeah. Of, kind of rich and... Just meat. that smoky flavor. Yeah. Yeah, I can definitely taste that. Which the pepper helps. Right. Yeah, on the retro hell, I still get a pretty good pepper kick. Mm -hmm. But it's... Uh, it, for me, it's not as potent as, as it was in that first that first third. It just, just about knocked you on your keister. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, real good. I've been real happy with this. I don't remember what I paid for this. It was probably about eight dollars. That seems to be what the going price was for the cigars in that area, for the uh, the house cigars. The 
barber pole might have been a little bit more. Now I think about it, I think the barber pole is like nine or nine and a half. Now I think about it. But, you know, I mean, not ridiculous in price. And to get the changes that you get with a barber pole, to me, it's worth that extra buck fifty. Yeah. It's, a, it's definitely surprised me. Getting some cedar, um, like a cedar spice. Subtle. A little bit of the leather. Mm -hmm. But, but the, the leather quality is very subtle. The, the flavor is definitely there, but it's a very soft soft leather it's not not real strong on the leather but it's it's definitely there yeah I'm real happy with this would have been nice maybe to, to know some more information about it um, I like to um, kind of get give that type of information mm -hmm. when, when I'm doing my videos or, or even my written reviews. Mm -hmm. Try to find out as much about the cigar as I can, um, but uh, I, I just don't have that information with this cigar, which is a shame, but um, you don't always get that. Even, uh, you know, sometimes you can go online even to like a particular brand's website, and sometimes they don't list, you know, all the well, you know, they may say, well, it's got a candela leaf, or it's got a uh, uh, sun-grown leaf, or it's got a, a Connecticut shade leaf, or an Ecuadorian, or, or Habano, you know, wrapper, or whatever. Um, but sometimes they don't go into any detail on what the binder and the filler are. Sure. Um, but it's, I guess it's really not a big deal, but for somebody that, like, like me, that mm -hmm. wants to look for, if I know all the different leaves that are in it and, and what part of the scar that leaf is and over time you'll know well when they use this kind of leaf in the binder or this kind of leaf in the filler and I'm getting this flavor profile and smoking characteristic time and time again from various cigars with that same combination then you know you like that combination mm -hmm. so you can say okay since I really like this particular combination it gives me the certain flavor profile that I'm looking for, you can find that in other cigars, maybe in, you know, different quantities or, you know, as far as mm -hmm. different strengths or, or whatever, as far as um, how forward that flavor may be. Sometimes it'll vary a little bit, but knowing that this leaf will give me this. Right. I mean, it's nice it's, to know that. I was going to say, it's nice to know what to expect before exactly. you smoke it. Exactly. Um, and then with, you know, this was an unknown for me. Uh, it was a... a locally made it's you know it's not like you can go to uh, any of these big online uh, internet based uh, cigar shops and say well I want you know so and so cigar well we don't care because they're only a house cigar they only make them right there in that shop to sell them locally or through mail order or whatever you can call them but uh, yeah I mean you couldn't go to any of those you know web based sites and and buy this cigar it's just not there. You can you can get a barber pole cigar, and you may find one that's very similar, but since you don't know what what right. the blend is, you wouldn't you know you wouldn't know what to look for. For me, the cigar started off you know, really powerful, mm -hmm. um, and it's. As I smoked it down, it's become more and more mild. Even even as it would pick up a little bit in the pepper kick, it didn't go way out like like when it started. So it, it you know two steps forward, one step back kind of thing, uh, all the way. All right, well we'll keep smoking this and see what happens when we finish the final third and get into the nub. See if there's any surprises or if it uh, remains the same. See you in a bit. Alright, so here we are about an hour and a half in, in the nub, and uh, getting some changes. Uh, I've gotten some changes throughout, but I've noticed they're a little more up front now than they were earlier on because that pepper note isn't really overpowering everything. Mm -hmm. It's kind of dancing back and forth with um, a, a, a little more subdued pepper note, mm -hmm. 
grilled meat, um, cedar spice. Uh, every once in a while, a, a hint of sweet cedar, a little bit of leather in there. It's really kind of bouncing back and forth. Really enjoyable. In fact, there's a maybe a slight floral character um, on the surrounding smoke. Not not real not real forward, but there's it's like as I'm drawing. There's just, a, just this real subtle floral character. And it's kind of neat because the, the changes are coming a little more quickly. It's just bouncing back and forth and back right, and forth. Yeah, like I know exactly each draw you is mm -hmm. different. You, know, you don't get like two or three draws and it slowly changes from one, you know, one flavor to the next. They're, they're very very sharp changes. They're, they're instantaneous. And, and earlier on, they were a little more subtle going from one to the next. They, sometimes they kind of blend right. a little bit from one to the other, but now it's just this or this or this or this. There's nothing overlapping right now for me. So is that something that normally only happens with uh, the barber pole? Or is that... Not necessarily. You can, you can get that in other types of mm -hmm. cigars? Yeah, you definitely get that in other types of cigars. Um, where the barber pole brings another dimension to it is because you've got the two different lap wrapper leaves mm -hmm. and each one brings its own thing to the mm -hmm. table and at any given time both wrapper leaves are burning in different proportions depending on where you're at in the burn right but you never have just all of one wrapper leaf and none of the other right it's always you know some ratio um, and then with like with any cigar as you as it burns down towards the nub the flavors typically become a little more concentrated uh, because of the heat. Right. The, the heat releases the flavors. Um, so it's, it's, it's definitely burning hotter. The, the cigar is warm in the fingers. The smoke is, uh, it, the smoke itself is hotter temperature wise. Um, and you, know, you, you may find that you get to a point where the smoke is too hot and it seems to um, like burn out the flavors. So, it, yeah, so as you get down towards the nub, you maybe smoke it a little slower so it doesn't get too hot. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people don't like a hot cigar. I, I don't like a hot cigar, right. but a lot of people won't burn it down this far just because the smoke is heating up, and that's a big turnoff to some people. Um, for me, as long as the flavors are good, you know, I'll burn my fingers if the flavors are good until the point where Absolutely. I can't stand it. So. Any uh, final thoughts for you? No, just first barber pole, uh, I'm impressed. I like it. Like you said, the different ratios, the differences in the flavors all the way throughout. Like I'm used to, you know, you go through each layer and you get that particular flavor. It's just, you know, just like the barber pole itself, it just kind of like s spirals around. Right. I like it. And uh, how did it pair with the... Uh St. Augustine rum. I think it paired good. Yeah, so I, you know, I think the uh, the rum helped to bring a, a different flavor profile to the table. Mm -hmm. um, now, if we were to drink a, a scotch or a bourbon or something, it would definitely change oh, yeah. the uh, profile. Um, and the interesting thing is, as I had mentioned, that this, this rum has a, uh, a tequila character to it. Mm -hmm. So that, that in itself is interesting. So it's almost like you're getting it's almost like you're pairing the cigar with both tequila and rum, so Which you're getting both crazy. both flavor mm -hmm. both flavor enhancers at the same time. So, uh, so with that, uh, we'll go ahead and end this review here, saying that uh, the uh, La Hacienda de Cuba Barber Pole Cigar. Um, this is a Toro size, uh, probably six by fifty-two or maybe fifty-four ring gauge. Um, been very pleasant. Uh, Fairly even burning. Had to touch it up a couple times mm -hmm. uh, with just you know a lot of talking back and forth, and the scar went out and that kind of thing. But uh, other than that, uh, burned really well, and uh, real happy. This was uh, about 9.50 if I remember correctly for this cigar. Well worth it. Yeah, for you know hour and a half plus, <laughs> you know definitely definitely worth the money. So thank you for once again watching Scorpion Cigar Reviews. Catch you next time.
skunk. Go on. 